Father in heaven, we thank you, we praise you. This morning you are gathered over here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we thank you, Lord, that we have seen the light. Non is testimony of how the thief has stolen, killed, and destroyed so many things in our life. But when she turned her heart to you, Lord Jesus, She began to experience a life that she had not experienced a whole life. And how true your words are. You have come to give us life, life in abundance. How true your word is. Come and taste that the Lord is good. He is sweeter than honey, gold and, and, and precious than gold and silver or anything in this world. Lord Jesus, we want to have that relationship that Nani was talking about. In spite of all the faults, in spite of all that she went through, she found the true treasure. And this true treasure has not only filled her with joy, but she carries this joy everywhere. And others can see the light in her heart. Yes, Father, as we are in your presence, O Spirit of God, reveal to us the deepest strategy or the tools that Satan uses to keep us away from experiencing you. Expose it, Lord, and teach us how to kill it. So that when these hindrances or these conflicts or these deep sicknesses which are the root of physical sickness and pain are destroyed, we too will sing with joy like St. Paul. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Even in the midst of that storm that we are going through, the gentleness in a heart is a sure foundation of fruit, of peace, that the Lord is truly in us. So here we are submitting to you, our whole being, and asking you, Almighty Holy Spirit, to minister to us, speak to us the truth, so that every lie that is hidden inside, corrupted and destroying us, will be brought into the light and be destroyed by the power of your Spirit. And we are so excited, O oh Lord, that today there's going to be a supernatural spiritual surgery that will destroy the physical manifestation of satanic works in our life. We thank you, we praise you, and we give you full control over our lives. You minister to us, O oh Lord. We are all in your school learning from you, Almighty Holy Spirit. You are the teacher, take over the class, and teach us these secrets and reveal to us with understanding how we can fight the fight of faith and get victory every test of our life. We thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, please be seated. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Ronnie, for your testimony. Hallelujah. 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 As she said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy and I've come to give you life. 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 Oh sorry, not wife. I've come to give you life, life. life. and life in abundance. abundance. So do you have life? Yes. Hello, do you have life? Yes. Then Jesus came to give you life when you have life? Yes. So what is life? Do you have life? Yes. yes. So what is life? Life is life. And what is life? And I'm asking you, do you have life? Yes. Nani, yes. please can you tell them to talk to me? <laughs> we have life, yes. Can we, can we talk, please? Yes. Hello, please, I beg you, can we talk? Yes. You understand my Indian? Yes. English? Yes. Perfect, okay. What is life? No. Life. 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 What is life? Okay, okay, okay. If I understand what is life, 
then I can also understand what is God's life that Jesus came to give me. Is that right? Now, now not he was saying, in our life, the thief has stolen a lot of things out of our including a marriage. Is that right, Nani? Yes. Health, wealth, job, most many things. But she says, from the last two years, she found the life that Jesus came to give her. So, first I must understand what is life. My life is the sum total of my thinking, my feeling, my decisions, my actions, my desires, my will. When I take the whole total of my words, it becomes my life. Example, is there anybody here married? Only one or two people are married, very good. Now when you got married, thank God both of you are sitting there. <laughs> Did you all come to church? Yes. Did you tell before the priest, I take uh, this woman to be my wife? And the priest asked her, and she said, I've come because my mama told me to get married with him. Or did you say, I take him as my husband? Yeah, but if my mother was alive, she'd come in time enough to marry him. <laughs> but on that day, did she say, I do? She did, yes. You heard it? Yeah. What did she have to say, I don't? Could you get married? No. No. So the day she said that I do, everything in her future opened up with that decision. So, so in her life, Every word we speak, everything that we think, everything that we desire, the sum total is my life. So right now, in whichever situation you are, is because of the sum total of all those things that we had already planted in the past. So Noni found out that all these decisions and all these desires that I've taken did not give me joy or peace but it only broke me down so she came to jesus now when she came to jesus she wanted jesus to heal her and jesus said i can heal you if only you allow my word to abide in you so jesus's word is jesus because his word became flesh so she received Jesus' word and she made a decision, Lord, all this time this was my desire, but now your word is saying this should be my desire. So I take a decision to agree with you and disagree with all those things that I used to do in the past. Is that right? Yes. And when she made that decision to agree with the word, the word began to change her thinking began to change her feeling, began to change her decisions, her actions. And when her actions changed and she repeated the new actions, her habits changed. The same person who was in depression because of a problem now began to realize that she's, feel, she's experiencing a joy that she had never experienced in her life. In those days, might be she was feeling so lonely that she would watch the television. <laughs> and the television would tell her about the vision that the devil had for her. And, and the television called it as entertainment. And that entertainment gave her a good feeling for a moment and then she found herself in bigger mess. But now she began to use another television called the Bible, where God began to tell her about the vision he has for her. So when she began to spend five hours and ten hours with a television talking to her about Jesus' vision for her, the thief could steal no more and Jesus, the good shepherd, began to give her life, life 
in abundance. Is she still alone in the house? Yeah. Is the situation still the same? Yes. But has things changed inside of her? Yes. Now, when things change inside of her, does those things outside control her anymore? No. Praise God. When a person is with Jesus, then the outside circumstances has no power to control you. In fact, the one who is in you, Jesus, strengthens you to have control over every situation, every circumstance that comes against you and you are in perfect rest in your mind and experiencing a peace beyond understanding. Praise God. Praise so God. shall we get into the word of God now and see which is the tool that Satan uses the maximum and we get deceived and fall into the trap and our life begins to get destroyed with our own free choice. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Let's go to book of James. The book of James chapter 3. And let's start with 16. Oh, let's start with uh, 13. Shall we read it? Who is a wise man and endured with knowledge among you? Let him show out of good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is, but is earthly, sensual and devilish. Have you ever had argument at home? Now you both went to sleep on the same bed. Now you went and began to touch her and say, let's forget it. What did she say? <laughs> uh, listen, listen, young man, you have every right to keep your mouth shut because whatever you speak will be taken into account against you. So be careful what you speak because after this, you will be going home. <laughs> if I tell the truth, that's all I can do. Okay, you are speaking the truth. Okay, now, she did, <laughs> okay? And now your backs were towards each other. What are you thinking in your mind at that time? Will I try again? <laughs> and, and, and what is she thinking in her mind? <laughs> now, are you getting thoughts? Yeah. Now, what kind of thoughts are you getting? Getting thoughts from the Bible? Or getting extremely negative thoughts? Yeah, rejection. Rejection. And what about her? And, and the whole night you spent without love no and, and, and there was strife and the Bible says such kind of thoughts does not come from heaven it comes from the evil one and it is earthly sensual and devilish so one of the powerful tool to destroy marriages or relationship the devil uses a tool called strife and when the strife is on the Bible says devil has now legal right to steal kill and destroy so when a person has spent the whole night in strife what happens in the morning now Satan has legal right to afflict your body with physical sickness 
because that strife is a root by which you have opened the door for the thief to come in to steal kill and destroy praise god praise god hallelujah hallelujah and that's why he says for where there is look at 16 for where there is envy and strife there is there is confusion, confusion and every evil work so satan's design to destroy christian lives christian families the children of christian parents is to inject strife so when strife is injected the reason a person is in strife is because the person becomes self centered instead of being god centered instead of being god conscious the person is self conscious and as long as the person remains in that self conscious there is going to be no repentance no change but going on the same journey till destruction is manifested so strife is a tool of the enemy and what is that strife what is that offense when i have a negative response towards situations circumstances people's comment i am in strife let's look at jesus now somebody might say my my life got messed up and destroyed from the time this person came into my life have you heard that oh you have not heard it in india it's very common <laughs> you irish people are so different from us <laughs> praise god in 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 india they would say my whole life my whole future got messed up from the time i met this person now if that statement was true then jesus is life should have been messed up more than anybody else because even though he had committed no sin and he was full of love yet he went through the cross where every evil was done against him and yet you find him winning every battle and every test of his life the reason is he would not allow strife to have a hold on him but attack the strife with love the greatest power in the universe is love why because god is love and love never fails have you ever heard uh never fails okay have you ever heard waterproof yeah. yes what does that mean no water water, water. water cannot penetrate yeah. water. have you have you ever heard have you ever heard soundproof yes. yes good have you ever heard bulletproof yes, yes. have you ever heard failure proof yes no. there is no thing that is failure proof except love and god says in his word love never fails and jesus tested it as man when satan used everything possible the whole kingdom of darkness against one man not against one god jesus fought the battle as man not as god so the whole force of demons the whole human race against one man have you seen when we were small we used to take that a magnifying glass in sun and we would point it to a spot and it would start burning mm -hmm. did anybody try that yeah. yeah so in the same way the whole demonic force against one point to jesus and yet jesus turns around and says father forgive them for they know not what they are doing so was jesus self centered in that whole situation or was he all the time god centered and other centered so why are now let's say uh, we say that person hurt me now did that person hurt you or you were self conscious that caused the hurt if because you were self conscious it caused the hurt So can you stop people from hurting you? 
No, the root is not the people hurting you. The root is that I am self-conscious that is causing me hurt. So I cannot stop people from hurting me. I can stop those hurts when I shift from self-conscious to God-conscious or using my life for the benefit of others. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when this thought comes to me about strife, do I need to quickly attack it or allow it to have a hold on my mind? And if I do not attack it and I allow it to have a hold on my mind, now that thought will begin to grow, multiply and my attitude towards that person will be extremely negative, turn out to be anger, turn out to be bitter, turn out to be revengeful and I am now actually not attacking that person but the demons are using me to destroy me. I need to resist it. So can strife work in families and destroy families? Yes. Can it destroy relationships? Yes. Can it destroy the church? Yes. And Satan's power to destroy a nation is strife. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, is God a loving God? Yes. 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 Is it his desire to always bless us? Yes. Always do good things in our life? Yes. Then why is it not working? Now here is a wire. Now here is a wire which carries electric power. I can hold it and still not get electric current that can kill me because it is insulated. But if I peel this and then touch it, this current can kill me. Is that right? Yes. In the same way, when I walk in strife, I have covered myself with insulation. Now, the power of love that brings blessing is blocked and it does not flow in my life. And now, even though God wants to do good things in my life, strife has blocked every good thing, every God's plan in my life. And even though God says, I've got great plans for you, plans for your welfare, not for your destruction, those plans will never come to pass. How many of you believe your future is in God's hand? Now, I explain to you, if you are in strife, will God's plan come into your life? Let's take some example to understand better. Was it God's will for people of Israel to go to the promised land? Yes. 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 Was the land flowing with milk and honey? Yes. Yes. Did he bring them out of Egypt? Yes. Yes. With war or by his own power? By his own power. Yes. Was Pharaoh convinced that God was working with the Israelites? Yes. 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 On that Passover night when all the male children who were the elders died, did Pharaoh's did Pharaoh lose his son? Yes. yes. Did he tell Moses that night, take your people and get out of Egypt? Yes. yes. Now Moses got the people out and they began to travel. After three days, what happened to Pharaoh? His heart got hardened. Now what is that hardened heart? He got into strife. Did he chase the Israelites? Yes. Yes. Were they blocked at the Red Sea? Yes. yes. Did the Israelites get into strife there? Yes, they were angry with Moses because they could see the Red Sea in front, Pharaoh and his army behind. They thought it's the end. But what about Moses? Was he in strife? Was he in love? And that's why he got in contact with God. Did God give him a solution? The proof is whenever a person refuses to walk in strife and walk in love, he is always connected to God and God will always give him a solution to a situation that will help him to escape. And God gave Moses the solution and said, speak to the Red Sea. Did the Red Sea part? Yes. 
Did Pharaoh see this amazing event? Yes. Yes. Did he know that God was favoring the Israelites? Yes. Yes. But did strife took over his mind so much yeah. that he made a wrong decision to go after them? Yeah. Yes. Yes. When the Israelites passed on to the other side, did God tell Moses, command the waters to come back? Yes. Yes. Did strife take them into the sea where they were destroyed? So what is strife going to do in your life? Take you on a journey of confusion that will torture you and put you to death and destroy not only you, your family, your household and generations to come. Strife is a very dangerous demonic spirit that manifests with anger with revenge, with bitterness, and it will destroy our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what's the solution for overcoming strife? The spirit of God, who is the spirit of love. Did Jesus operate on love? Even when he was insulted, beaten up, and now he has been stripped naked on the cross and the soldiers are casting lots who will get his garment. Now when a person is put to shame, what's the first thing he wants to do? Cover his shame. So when a person is put to shame, does he become extremely conscious of his self? Yes. But what did Jesus do? He was not conscious about his self. He was conscious about others. So in our life, when you are going through any kind of trouble, are you conscious about yourself? Are you conscious about how can your life be a blessing to others? Yes. A person who is saying, I'm a Christian, is a person who is saying, myself got crucified the day I received Jesus. The day Jesus got crucified, I got crucified with him. The day Jesus was buried, I was buried with him. And the day God raised him from the dead, that very moment, God raised me up from the old life into a new life. And I'm now a new creation, born again with the Spirit of God inside of me, who teaches me to love. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so when you read James 3.16, let's go to James 360. What does it say? For where and strife is, there is confusion and evil work is the product. What is the root? The root is that my thinking is not aligned with the word of God. Why are you angry? The reason I'm angry is because my thoughts that are running in my mind is contradicting God's word. So my life has been sucked out and now poison is injected in me and with this poison now I'm injecting the same poison in the one whom I love the most. So what is the battle for me every day? How much I pray or how much do I keep my mind stayed in agreement with God's word? You might be an extreme champion that you are praying for 10 hours every day, but that still does not qualify you to win. What makes you a winner is on the day of battle, how much can you take the endurance, the pressure to keep my mind stayed on God. How much can I agree to what God says? God says, love your enemies. I say, how can I love him? Who is my enemy? My enemy is anyone who is hurting me. My enemy is anyone who is taking me away from God. And God is saying, I want you to love that person. Now, how can I love that person when that person has done so much wrong to me? And God says, you can love that person because I love you. 
with the love that i have given you with the forgiveness that i have given you now you also give that forgiveness to the other did jesus say about the parable of the kingdom of god that there was a king and this king one day found one of his servant had owed him 10000 talents so he called the servant and said pay me my 10000 talents and the man pleaded and said i do not have the money but i will surely pay you and the king said take his wife and children and everything he got sell it out and put the money in the treasury the man pleaded and the king had compassion on him and the king forgave him you remember yes sir the king forgave him but what about the money that he owed what about the debts the king cancelled his debts so that means if there is forgiveness for that forgiveness transaction to take place there has to be a price that needs to be paid and who paid the price the one who forgave or the one who was supposed to be forgiven who paid the price did the man pay the price or the king paid the price king king. so what is forgiveness is it fair or unfair <laughs> forgiveness is always unfair because the one who forgives pays the price for the other are you following yes now he received this forgiveness of 10000 talents and he went and met a servant who owed him only 100 shillings what did he do to that man he caught him by his neck beat him and threw him into the prison and said the day you pay me then you will come out the other servant saw and reported to the king so the king called that servant and said did i have compassion on you and forgived you of 10000 talents should you not have had compassion on your fellow servant and because you did not have forgiveness now you will have to pay the whole amount and he threw him into the prison where there was gnashing of teeth and god called that servant wicked servant so when a person has got strife god calls that person what wicked, wicked. did jesus give us an example that we have been forgiven so much yeah. and we need to forgive one another so was it an advantage for the servant to forgive or was he in advantage with unforgiveness when he does not forgive he is thrown into the prison where there is gnashing of teeth that means he is going to hell so for me not to forgive somebody is a benefit for me or is it going to be a disaster have you ever heard people say i am willing to forgive but let him come and say sorry okay let's say the person did not say sorry who is at loss because we do not understand satan is so deceiving and cunning he wants to remind you look what he has done to you he doesn't deserve to be forgiven and god says you and i also don't deserve to be forgiven now did jesus say to his father father forgive them yes why did jesus say father forgive them because he was willing to pay our debts had jesus paid the debts by taking the punishment on himself yes. did he deserve that no did we deserve that yes. did he take it on our behalf yes now that he has paid the debts does he have the right to forgive yes yes have you ever heard somebody say i have done wrong to you i am extremely sorry yeah. now by saying sorry is the transaction completed no <laughs> i do say i do say you can say sorry but your actions seem different 
Okay, let's take look at the, uh, let's take an example practical. Let's say you borrowed some money from the bank for a house. Yeah. Possible? Okay. Yeah. Now, do you have to pay them every month? Yeah. Okay. You were paying very nicely till you lost a job. So, four months you did not pay. Will the bank say it's okay? No. Will they send you a notice? Now, in that notice, you are replying, I am extremely sorry for not paying. So, please forgive me and pardon me. What will the bank say? <laughs> What's that? Peep, peep, peep. <laughs> what will the bank say? They will say, I understand, and we also understand you're sorry, but you still have to pay the money with the interest. So, does sorry can, uh, complete the transaction? No. There has to be the price that you're willing to pay. So the moment you made that payment that I will finish this transaction and I will never bring it back to the court of my mind. My mind is the court where I have a lot of discussions. Come on. So somebody came and said Mr. A did this to me and Mr. A had done this to you as well. Now will you open your mouth and say oh yeah he did to me. No. Your transaction got closed the day you forgive him. <coughs> the very reason that you have brought that case out again is because the case is not yet dismissed. Will the devil use somebody to recall some things that have done wrong to you? Why is he doing that? So that you get back into strife and now he has legal right to afflict you again. Are you understanding his strategy? Yes. Hello? Yes. So is it extremely profitable to forgive and walk in love? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says where there is envy and strife, there is there is there is so that means when there is strife, my mind will not be sure in taking the right decision. It looks like it is right, but I'll end up making the wrong decision that will take me even deeper into a mess because the Bible says, what I sow, I will surely reap. So is there any advantage of walking in strife? But what about a person who is making decisions of love? Let's take some examples for this. Was Joseph loving God? The Old Testament Joseph? Yeah. Yes. The 17-year-old Joseph? Yes. Okay. Did he love his brothers? Yes. yes. Did his brothers love him? No. Did they hate him? Yes. Now, did that strife make them take a decision to kill their brother? Yes. 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 Did they put him in the pit? Yes. yes. Did they then brought him out and sold him as a slave? Yes. yes. Now what was Joseph's response to them? <coughs> how come, how come Joseph was fixed in loving them? There is some secret behind it. Come on. Yeah, love. See, see, please understand. Love is not a feeling. Love is not an emotion. Love is a decision. Love is action. Love is a person. God is love. Love is a person. So, how come Joseph was not operating in strife in spite of such a, such a situation has come into his life that if he is sold as a slave, he would die a slave. He is a man, he is a son of a rich man. And now he finds himself a slave for the rest of his life. Does he have any future? It looked as if he had no future. How many times it looks to you also there is no future? So how come Joseph still found a way for his future? 
There's a secret. Come he, on, come he, on. He knew how much God had forgiven him. There's a secret. <laughs> Now listen. Did God give him a dream? Yes. Yes. In that dream, did God show him that He's going to make him a great man? Yes. 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 Now was he fixed on that dream or was he fixed on the situation? The dream. 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 What about us? Are we fixed on God's promise? Are we fixed on our current issues and current people's comment and current all those things happening around us? Which one? Yeah, he was the one. Can we talk? Oh. Yes. Trust, trust God. So, so was he fixed on that dream? Yes. 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 Now, when uh, sometimes it so, so happens when we were coming at night, the Google did not show us any blocks. But when we came to that place at night, we found the road is closed and they are repairing the road at night. Yeah. And then we had to take a U turn, and we went in a, another direction, and we found that one also was closed. And then we had to go all around and reach the other place. And they wrote sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah. Did you feel strife? <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Yes. So also when they build some bridges, they put that. Work in progress. So, what is Joseph saying? God, I know the final destination is that you are going to make me a great man, but I don't know when. I don't know where. I don't know how. I don't know which. I don't know whom. I don't know anything. But I do know you have a plan to make me a great person. So, Lord, I am not going to look at the process. Yes. My eyes are fixed on the final destination, and this what I am going through is a part of the process. And the only way I can keep this process going in my favor is loving and forgiving. Those who come against me. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Now, in our life, do we look at the final destination, no. or do we look at work in progress? Work, work, work. And work in progress is always very convenient. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you see somebody's house is being constructed, it's very beautiful, isn't it? During the construction. In the same way, God is saying, "You are my building, and I am your master builder, and you are work in progress in the construction, and I'm showing you what I'm going to do." To you, the end result is: I want to make you like my son Jesus, and to do that, I'm going to allow some wild situations to come into your life, and all I want you to do is imitate my son. And to do that, I will also give you the power. I will also give you the anointing. I will also give you the Holy Spirit, and I will also give you my promise. Now, let's take an example. Do you go to work? Oh, we are all retired. Hello, do you go to work? Yes. I know Sister Anne goes to work. Okay. Sister Anne, how many hours do you go to work? Eight hours or twelve hours? Eight hours. Eight hours. Eight hours. And how many hours to travel? Um, about half hour. Okay, so nine hours. And that doesn't include the lunch break. No. No. So ten hours. So ten hours you remain outside your house. And why do you remain outside? Because you love your work. That's why you go to work, yes. or you go to work because you get euros. Both. Yes. 
So are you willing to do the same work f without euros? So the motivation of going to work is euros. In the same way, Joseph is saying the motivation of this situation that I'm going through is my relationship with God and I do not want it to be hindered because of my strife. If I can go through that hard labor to get those euros, how much more will I be ready to go through to receive my love relationship with Jesus? Okay, let, let's take another example. Sister Anne, do you have children? Yes. How many? Three. Good. When you first got pregnant, did you know what is pregnancy? No, no you had only read about it. Yes. Then did you get labor pain? Yes. Only for two minutes. Yes. More? Two hours? Yes. Or more? More. Okay, six hours? No. More. Okay, ten hours? Yes. Was it painful or just a mild pain? Painful. Extremely painful. Yes. Did you get thoughts at that time, I don't want any more children? Yes. Yes. And then the baby came. Yes. Did you tell the doctor, keep her away, she caused so much of pain? No. <laughs> I don't even want to look at her. <laughs> Or did you grab the baby? I grabbed her. But you were in pain. Not that much, no. The moment you saw the baby, you were so thrilled that you forgot the pain. Yes. And you forgot it so much that you told your husband, I'm ready for the second. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now what motivated you to go through that pain again? Love. Bringing that life into this world. So all those nine months, were you looking at your pain and hardship or were you looking at the baby who is going to come? So and so in our life, are we looking at the outcome of what is going to come if I walk in love? Or am I forgetting what God is interested in and looking at the current situation and aborting my baby? When I am in strife, I have aborted the pregnancy of what God had planned in my life. And now, instead of God's plan coming to manifestation, I find Satan's plan coming into manifestation. So is it, is it profitable for me to walk in love or is it profitable for me to walk in strife? Are you, are, you, are you following? Yes. Yeah. Now let's fast forward it. Was Joseph falsely accused yes. Yes. by the Egyptian master's wife? Yes. Yes. Did he open his mouth? No. 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 Why not? No. Was he focused on her accusation or was he focused on God's dream for him? In our life, are we focused on God's promise or what somebody told you? You know, one day the Lord began to show me there was a marathon race and I was watching on the TV. And this man was in lead, extreme lead. And he reached the final round inside the stadium. And the people, some of them were screaming and shouting and and encouraging him. But on the other side of the stand, he said, think that those people are saying to this man who is running his final 500 meters, you are donkey, you are monkey, you are stupid, you are this and that, they're shouting. Will this man focus on what people are saying or will he still be running on his track? Keep running. Keep running. A champion does not focus what people are saying. A champion is only focused on completing his track and be a winner. Imagine for that man, he stops on the track and is arguing with them. <laughs> Do we find Christians 
like this. Yes. Have you ever been like this? Yes. yes. And when you argued, what happened to the others? <laughs> and where are you now? Still in the same place, arguing with them. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so did, G did Joseph argue? No. Was he put in the prison? Yes. Did he look at the prison and say, Oh my God, now I'm going to be in the prison all my life. Yeah. No. Is, is he still believing for God yeah. yes. to carry out his plan? Yeah. Yes. Now, did he help a prisoner yes. in his dream? Yes. Did he tell him, when you go to the king, remember me? No. Yes. 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 Did the prisoner remember him? No. Yes. Yeah. no. Eventually. He did not remember him for two years. Yeah. Now, let's say you helped this brother Vijay. Okay, and he got blessed, and you are in the same parish, and now he's not even looking at your face. <laughs> Will you open your mouth and tell your wife about him? Be be because you did amazing work for him, and he has even forgotten you and not even looking at you. Will that trigger you to open your mouth and speak good things about him? <laughs> Come on. Have we done something good for others? Yes. And when those others turned their face, did it help us to open our mouth and speak all the poison out of our mouth about the same person? Now what is the meaning? If Joseph had to open his mouth and speak against that person, then that person whom God has chosen for him to take him to the palace, Joseph has put a block that that person will never be able to take him to the palace and God's plan is cancelled. So do we have inside the church sharing poison about one another? Yes. Yes. Can that church flourish now? No. no. Can God's plan be manifested there now? No. Let's say there's a small group. Noni is having a small group and all the members are there. Do they have something called as back biting? Yes. Talking about one another? Yes. Their weaknesses, condemning and judging. Yes. Now, when that happens in the group, has strife been planted in that group? Yes. Will God's plan be accomplished in that no. group? No. Will Satan bring division in the group yes. and destroy the group yes. which God had planned to take them on a platform beyond imagination? We do not find Joseph even once speaking against that prisoner. Two years have gone by. Now, has Joseph trained himself to walk in love in those two years? Yes. Before a promotion can come in the spiritual realm, there is always going to be a time called preparation. God prepared Moses for 40 years in the palace. He prepared Moses for 40 years in the desert. When he got well trained in the palace and in the desert, God said, Moses, now I want, to go, I want you to go back to the palace and talk to Pharaoh because I've already trained you how to operate in the palace. And the day Pharaoh tells, take my people and go, I've already made you a champion how to survive in the desert so that now you can lead those people out of Egypt through the desert to the promised land. My friend, if you are going through some desert experience, that desert experience is not going to go wasted. God is preparing you and he is preparing you to be 
a person who will lead others who are in the desert and say hey i have been there and i have come here to show you how the lord brought me out and i'm going to teach you how you can come out and you can also reach to the promised land none of our bad experience or negative experience will ever go wasted it is god preparing you for a great future if i had not gone through the journey of disaster i don't think so i would be standing here and talking to you but when i went through the disaster satan thought it was the end of my life he kept putting in my mind that this is the end there's no way out the best thing is go and give up your life but when i was going through the journey it did not look like there was any hope or there was any future but as i began to dig into the bible i found that god speaking to me and telling me where you are right now is not your end result everything that you see with your eyes is always temporary everything that you see in the word of god is always eternal and if you can get your eyes of what you see and get into your eyes into those promises that you can't see those promises will take you from that situation where you are into that situation that god has promised you and that is why you find that there is a problem in the palace and the king has no solution to it and he has become so restless do you know why because god has made the king restless because their solution of the palace is only in the prison in a man named joseph who is walking in love in the same way there are some problems out in the world and god is saying when you are walking in love i have chosen you to use that love and go to that place and solve their problem when joseph went and interpreted the dream was the king happy yes was it a good news yes it was the most bad news and the news was he told the king there is going to be a rich harvest for 7 years and the next 7 years it's going to be famine it's going to wipe out everything but then he told the king i got wisdom if we can take the crop of that 7 years and store it and then we can sell it on premium when everywhere there is famine and the king began to think this man is not only a man who interprets the dream but he turns the bad dream into a good dream and when he gave what when he gave the king the wisdom that wisdom made him the governor so when a person is walking in love he hears the voice of the good shepherd when a person is walking in bitterness he is hearing the voice of the thief who will teach him wrong things praise god praise god isn't the bible so true the bible says the one who is last shall be first she came last and she got the first seat <laughs> I sometimes say God your prophecies are so true. There are some who came early in the morning and still they did not get the first seat. And the one who came so late still gets the first seat right in the middle. Praise God. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. God is proving his word again and again that his word is true. So my friend are you a solution to somebody's problem yes yes and are you going to solve the problem with your wisdom or god's wisdom god's wisdom and the more and more you solve other people's problem with god's wisdom you get promoted beyond your capacity beyond your ability if joseph had to go through hard labor can he ever reach a position of being a governor no no but can love take you there The world says you need to be qualified with this 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 and you will be prosperous. You can be qualified with the best of the best degrees, but if you are a person full of strife and and arrogance and pride, your degrees will never take you to God's destination. You will be a troublemaker and everybody will be going away from you. Yeah. 
So what makes you successful? Love. Now let's study the word success. Have you heard the word success before? Yes. What is successful? Full of success. Happy. What is success? Happy very much do you, do you know a man named Michael Jackson? Yes. yes. Was he successful? Yes. Yes, yes or no? Yes. yes. Really? No. <laughs> more in he thought he was. Huh? He thought he was. I, I, I'm asking you. It was his life. Success. No. No. Was his life. No. 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 Was his life. No. 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 Had God given him a gift? Yes. 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 Did he use it in the kingdom or in the kingdom of the world? In the kingdom of the world. What did the kingdom of the world give him? Name, fame, money, everything. Yeah. Money but at the same okay. time, okay. took away his peace and destroyed him completely. Yeah. Okay, let's take another person. Mother Teresa. Yes. Yes. Was she successful? Yes. yes. No. But yes. 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 And the word, no, I mean in the world in terms. Yeah, yeah. Does she answer like this? Yes, yes no, no, yes, yes. no. Yeah. Then how do you make decisions? Please, <laughs> okay, please. No, yes, uh, without strife, only love. Yes. Oh, no, strife. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 So, what is success? Success is a person who discovers God's calling and finishes his assignment before he leaves this planet Earth. And that assignment is always going to be a blessing not only to this generation, but generations to come. So you must ask a question, God, you have given me this life, this life is for what purpose? Am I supposed to live my life for myself? Or am I supposed to live my life for the kingdom? So that when I leave this planet earth, I have made an impact. I have left a legacy for the next generation. Do you know right now what is happening? I'm preaching to you. Is that right? Yes. yes. But the camera is recording everything that I'm speaking. A day will come when I'm dead and gone. But what I'm speaking here will be on the YouTube. 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 And I don't know which person in which part of the world will still be blessed with what God has given me. Yes. So what kind of work are you doing which will make an impact on the next generation? Do we have that resources? Yes. yes. But are we all the time thinking about myself? Yes. Then will I ever step out of my comfort zone? No. Do you know who's your biggest enemy? Your biggest enemy is your comfort. Yeah. Because comfort will never tell you to step out to be a benefit to others. Comfort will always say the benefit should come to me. I'll give you an example. Some centuries ago, the people from your country experienced the love of Jesus. And they could not rest in peace. So they left your country, got into a ship and went by sea. I don't know how many weeks it took, how many months it took and they came to my country. They did not know anybody there and all they carried was love. They did not know the language but they had a language called love. And when they came, they came along with them, not only love, but their resources as well. And they started schools, hospitals, and educated the people in my country. They are dead and gone. But what they planted, we are enjoying it even today. 
and some of them they never went back they stayed with the poor of the poorest till their last breath and never went back to the place where everything was comfortable my question always comes why did this irish people come to my country i thought there was no place in your country that's why they had to leave the country when i came here i see that there is so much of place but yet they left the country why why love because of love were they christians yes, yes. and are we christians yes. the same christ yes. the same holy ghost yes. then why the difference because we are not ready to make our decision the day we die and we step before god he is going to show us his plans and then we will begin to realize what we were settling for was the most miserable low life in spite of the great life that he had praise god praise god hallelujah hallelujah can you write down what we studied now and these are truths please apply them so that when i meet you again you will say hey brother that kind of life i am experiencing and i can see results beyond my imagination praise god praise god right now strife is designed strife is designed strife is designed to destroy our lives to destroy our lives our relationship and even the church when it rises up against us when it rises up against us and we do not actively resist it and we do not actively resist it it shuts us down so can strife take us out of god's plan yes, yes. and get satan's plan accomplished in our life Yes. So your future is in whose hand? God's. God's hand. So if you are operating in strife, can you blame God? No. Or has He given you the freedom to choose? He's given us the freedom to choose. So can you say it's in God's hand? So, so that means, so, so that means, Adam's life got messed up because of God's plan. No, no, it's bad. then how come his life got messed up because of eve <laughs> look at him he is looking at her ask him ask him did adam's life got messed up because of eve adam's life got messed up because of eve for listening to eve yeah no it was adam's own decision tell him tell him tell him tell him tell him shake him up tell him adam adam has a mind of his own he made his own decision she only gave him she only gave him a suggestion yeah, yeah. but did he open his mouth and eat it yes yes so whose decision so don't you blame on him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah so adam how did adam get messed up his own decision his own free will so every time i make a decision is it my choice yes but the consequences of that decision is it my choice yes. no no 
Adam had a freedom to choose. But once he made that decision, did he have the choice to choose the consequences? No, it comes with a package. So did that decision make him lose his relationship with God? Yes. Did he lose the Garden of Eden? Yes. Did he lose his health? Yes. Wealth? Yes. Blessings? Yes. Did he lose everything that God gave him? Yes. So his future was in whose hand? Adam. So, in a way, in a way, in, in a way, he has, to, he has to look forward to the dream. He thinks he has to do it himself. Yeah. So, your future is in whose hand? God's hand. Oh, it's still in hand. Oh, I think my hand. My future is in my hand, but I can decide to follow God's plan. Yeah, by your own decision. And where I decide. Yeah. So if you are a doer of the word, will God's decision, will God's plan come to accomplishment? 100% sure. But if you are not a doer of the word, then you are a wise man or a foolish man. So is it possible for a person to go to church every day and still be foolish? Yes. Good. Hallelujah. Because many a times people say, uh, you, you know, God will bless me. Why? Because I go to church every day. So just because you go to the garage every day, do you become a mechanic? No. Good. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> so do we need to learn the skills? Yes. yes. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So please write down. We must not fail we must not fail to stand up to strife. We must not fail to stand up to strife or else the blessings of God or else the blessing that God has in store for us. We must not fail to stand up to strife or else the blessings that God has in store for us will be blocked. Will be blocked. 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 Have you ever heard people saying, uh, you know, there is so much of financial crisis, please keep me in prayer. Yes. So let's say you are praying for that person and that person is walking in strife. Blessings will come because of your prayer. No. No. It's, it's like a person who is saying, I'm putting salt in the coffee, please pray that one day my coffee will become sweet. <laughs> and you are praying, God, please help him to make the coffee sweet. But you are not telling him, stop putting the salt and put sugar. Your coffee will become sweet. Ask your neighbor, what are you putting in the coffee? What are you putting in the coffee? Salt or sugar? <laughs> Hello, salt or sugar? Hey, salt or sugar? Sugar. Then the proof is that the coffee is sweet. If your life is not sweet, the proof is you are in strife. And if you go around telling everybody, keep me in prayer, your life will still not become sweet until you make a decision to cancel strife and make a decision to walk in love. Praise Lord. Just put what I'm reading, okay? Write down. Strife is present when our spirits, strife is present when our spirits do not line up with God's spirit. Strife is present with our spirit when our spirits do not line up with God's spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Now, now, now. Is the Bible saying we must be led by the Spirit of God? Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. When we are led by the Spirit of God, everything will be supernatural. Yes. Yes. What does that mean? That means 
that the spirit of god will always teach me to love the spirit of god will always teach me to agree to god's word and if a person makes a decision not to agree with god's word now is he going to be operating through the holy spirit yeah. or is he connected to the evil spirit so can the switch go off any time and that's why okay okay let's put it this way how many people are talking right now sorry how many people are talking right now over here you <coughs> want <coughs> that's the biggest lie everybody's mind is talking to you <coughs> but only difference is you are not opening your mouth and speaking what my mind is talking i am opening my mouth and talking to you but whereas you are looking at me and your mind is talking many things <laughs> praise god praise god like yesterday i met a beautiful lady who was told come for the meeting and she said who is the speaker and the lady said is from india <laughs> india <laughs> India <coughs> So she said But the other lady said you sit down there and listen you will receive the word And she came And she heard Now when she heard she did not hear an Indian speaking she heard the spirit of God speaking because the Indian only used his mouth but the words were still of god yes. but did it speak to a mind yeah yes. so right now even when you are writing down the spirit of god is talking many things and saying we need to make corrections all the men i want to talk to all the men my brother you you are the only man talking to me others are not talking so let me ask you again do you believe and agree to the woman who is sitting with you in the car not this lady <laughs> the other lady who sits in the car <laughs> i don't get out to speak to church speak to me <laughs> what one, one lady be free be a lady the lady who sits in your car always <clears throat> the lady. gps lady no 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 come get gps you're okay <laughs> to know the car No no but don't you use a GPS no. on your phone? No. I'm not. So let's say you went to an unknown place. Yes. Okay 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 any man using GPS? <coughs> My god in which which can generation am I? <laughs> okay it says the GPS there. Yes. Okay okay. Yeah. And you are in an unknown place. And the GPS lady says take a left turn. Will you agree with her? Well, yeah, if she's supposed to know where she's going. But will you agree with her? Yes. Oh, she's going in the direction. <laughs> Judging me. <laughs> so, 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 so you will always listen to that lady. What if you miss the road? Will she catch your throat? No. No. She'll say no problem. I'll reroute you. Yeah. 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 And will the kilometers increase? Yes. yes. Will the time increase? Yes. yes. Will the fuel consumption consumption yes. increase? Yes. Will the frustration increase? Yes. yes. And then you missed it again. Yes. Will it again start rerouting? Yes. And then you missed it again. Yes. It will still start rerouting. Isn't a life like this? Yes. yes. That it's getting rerouting because we miss it all the time. Yes. So will we ever reach God's destination? Unless, unless we do yeah, yeah. Now let's say you are saying all your prayers while driving and still missing. Will it still be rerouting? Yes. Yes. So just because you're praying, does that mean you'll reach God's destination? No. No. God's praying to God must help me to follow His instructions. If I don't follow the instructions, rerouting. 
Can you ask your neighbor, is your life full of rerouting? <laughs> Noni, for how many years your life was rerouting? Uh, 24. Oh, you are only 24 years old. <laughs> oh, yeah, 55. No, oh, um, yeah, 55. Uh, 54, 53 and a half. The life was rerouting. Yes. And then you began to follow God's instructions. Mm -hmm. Now, are you finding a new destination that you never found before? Yes. I was in the club, I was in gang fights, I was in everything you need, but nothing of God. So my life was full of devil's destination every day. And till a day came when I found everything is lost, health is lost, relationship is lost, marriage is lost, you name it, everything is lost. The thief has taken everything. And now comes the last days. And still God doesn't give up on me and he says, I can still turn it around if you are willing to follow my instruction it's still not late he said and I said Lord I'm willing and journey began and this time I saw to it that it should not get rerouting and I found I was on a high speed of recovery extremely high speed and then I found after many years the key was being a doer of the word. In those days I would find myself strange because I got into such addiction of the word that I would start believing the word more than what my eyes would speak. My early days I read it is more cheerful to give than to receive. I said how can it be? When somebody gives me a gift, I'm so much happy. But God said, no, no, no. When you give, it's more cheerful. So I began to ask and he said, when you give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. So when I had no money to eat food, no house to stay, on the street, wife and children, and not knowing where to go, he gave me a formula. Give. What is it that you got in your hand? Not money. Anything that you got in your hand. When you start giving, it never leaves your life. It never leaves your life. It has only gone into the future and it's growing and multiplying. And in a due season, it is coming back as a harvest. So when I found this a formula, I said, Lord, that means in the whole day, I must check how much am I giving what you have given me. And if I continue that every day, I know my future is blessed. Why? Because I'm sowing God's seed every day like a farmer and in due season I'm enjoying the harvest and even that harvest is not mine, it's for the kingdom. I get only a share of it. Is it my choice? Yes. So what am I releasing every day? Strife or love? No. And if you're releasing love, in spite of being unjustly treated, then the harvest will always be on God's side. Praise God. Praise God. So do I need to line up with God's word? Yes. yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So write down, for where envy and strife is, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion, there is confusion and every evil work, there is confusion and every evil work. Uh, you, supposing a person is in bitterness, has he lost his way? Yes. yes. Did Jesus say, I am the way? Yes. yes. Now, is Jesus' way full of love? Yes. 
Yes. So, if I want to walk that way, do I need to find the truth? Yes. So, once I find the truth and I apply the truth, will I experience his life? Yes. And that's why he said, I am the way, the only way, and in this only way, you will find the truth, and when you apply the truth, now you will find his life in abundance, and the thief can't steal this life. So is it an ongoing process every moment? Yes. Good. Right on. Where strife is, where strife is, confusion will also be. Where strife is, confusion will also be. Strife keeps us, strife keeps us from knowing for sure, strife keeps us from knowing for sure what course of action to take. Strife keeps us from knowing for sure what course of action to take. And it prevents, and it prevents sound decision making. And it prevents sound decision making. Envy is the result of refusing to trust God. Envy is the result of refusing to trust God and it leads to strife. Let me give an example. Was Saul the king of Israel anointed by God? Yes. 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 In the Old Testament, was he chosen by God? Yes. Yes. Now, Saul <laughs> was facing a test because a Philistine named Goliath was challenging the army. Was Saul ready to go into a battle? No. Did God reject Saul? No. 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 Okay. Let me show you. One Samuel. One Samuel thirteen was eight. From eight to fifteen. 1 Samuel 13 to 8 to 15. 13, 13. 1 Samuel chapter 13, 8 to 15. Praise God. Now, now, we are going to see what can envy and strife do. How a person who is anointed not only is destroyed, because of envy and strife, his whole family is wiped out and he ends up committing suicide. Are you ready? Yes. yes. It's the truth. And when we understand the truth, we repent, make the correction and we are set? Free. Free. We are set? Free. Free. Okay. Let's see. And Saul tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed, but Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. Now, Saul waited for a prophet named Samuel, who was supposed to come and meet him in a place called Gilgal, and he waited for 
seven days according to the set time Samuel had appointed and Samuel did not turn uh, did not come and the people became restless and they were moving out and Saul said now Saul is a king bring here a burnt offering to me and a peace offering and he offered the burnt offering and it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering behold Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him and Samuel said what have you done and Saul said because I saw that the people were scattered from me and that you came not within the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmak therefore said I the Philistines shall come down upon me to Gilgal and I have not made supplication unto the Lord I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering and Samuel said to Saul you have done you have done foolishly for you have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God which he commanded you for now would the Lord have established your kingdom for Israel forever so in God's plan Saul was the king and his kingdom was to be established for ever that was God's plan but what did Saul do he did something that was extremely wrong in the eyes of God because that office was meant only for the priest and he a king did not follow God's instruction and he did that now look at the verse 14 but now your kingdom shall not continue the Lord has sought a man after his own heart and the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people because you have not kept that which the Lord commanded you so was David God's choice no Saul was God's choice but when Saul failed to do what God had told him God got a substitute so Saul was God's first choice and David was God's second choice now let me ask you a question did this second choice David commit adultery yes. to hide his adultery did he kill the woman's husband yes. so he was a murderer he was now did Saul commit adultery no did he kill somebody no. then how come David was not rejected and Saul was rejected now if you are God whose sin is more dangerous I'm asking you Saul hey who committed murder who committed adultery but he doesn't get rejected Saul offered sacrifice which he is not supposed to do and he gets rejected and David obeyed in his own way and David now if you were God who would you punish hello if you were God who would you punish Saul offered sacrifice to God did he pray yes. or he prayed to the devil no he prayed to God but Saul got rejected David did not get rejected I'll tell you why when Samuel came and told Saul what have you done 
Did Saul give him an excuse yes. and justified his point? Yes. Yes. Now when Nathan came and told David, yes. did David give excuse and justify his point or he quickly repented? repented. A person when he makes a mistake and does not repent, that repentance will take him, that, that, that not repenting will take him into a disaster. So did Saul give excuse and justify? Yeah. Yeah. What about David? No. He quickly said, yes, I'm wrong. Now in our life, when we are corrected, do we justify? Yeah. Yeah. Do we give excuse? Yes. First example, you came late. And somebody said, you came late. What will you say? Traffic jam. Traffic jam. Now, did you say you are responsible? Yeah. No. no. The traffic. A person who gives excuse says, you cannot correct me. But a person who says, I am wrong, is yeah. saying, next time I'll see to it that I start my journey early, even if it's there is a traffic jam, and even though I come late, in spite of starting early, I still say, I am wrong. responsible, I'm wrong. Yeah. Now, did Saul get rejected? Yes. Yes. Is David selected? Yes. Let's fast forward. Now, David got anointed and he came to deliver cheese and bread and sandwich to his brothers in the army. His father sent him there. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, was David uh, a celebrate? Uh, uh, did people in his house celebrate him or tolerate him? Because when Samuel said to his father, Jesse, I'm coming to choose one of your sons as a king, yeah. was David invited in this? No. No. How do you feel when your father, mother, and everybody in the family reject you and say, go look after the sheep? Might be the whole world has rejected you, but God who has created you is saying, you are still my precious jewel. Might be that no, nobody is noticing you, nobody is paying attention to you, but God is saying, even when you sleep, I don't go to sleep, my eyes are fixed on you. Hmm. Now, when Samuel saw, did he say, oh, this one looks to be handsome, he looks to be tall, he looks to be strong, he looks to be a warrior, so let me anoint him. No. What did God say? God said, you look at the outer appearance, I look at the heart. That fellow is unfit, is full of poison in his heart. Yes. Did he get rejected? Yes. yes. For the talents? Yes. No. For the gifts? No. He got rejected because of his selfish heart. Did all the sons get rejected? Yes. yes. Then what did Samuel say? Do you have any more sons? Yes. I said there's one, but he's useless. <laughs> He's useless. <laughs> Don't even think about it. He is useless. <laughs> and Samuel said, I will not sit to have lunch without him. Call him. So even though everybody in your family and in your church call you useless, God says, when you have a good heart, I will exalt you and celebrate you in the presence of everybody. Wow. So is it your talent that God is interested? Or is he is it the heart that God is interested? Heart. So God looks at what? Heart. And we look at what? Heart. The beautiful face. That's why we spend so much of money decorating the earth. Is a body made of earth? Yes. Hello? Yes. Did God take the soil of the earth and make the body? Yes. So is this body earth? Yeah. Yes. And for that, how much do we spend? To decorate? With colors? <laughs> Hello, come on, talk to me, please. Do we put different kinds of colors on this soil? Yes, sir. And how much do you spend? We men should learn from the ladies. 
When we go to the parlor, we spend four hours over there. But look at the woman. When they go in, they come out in ten minutes. <laughs> you better learn from her. You better learn from her. She comes out in 10 to 15 minutes out. And look at you. When you go in, for, uh, do this, do this. Nails, then yeah. pedigree. No, not pedigree. Uh, pedi. <laughs> and then with the ply, not ply, what do you call plucker? <laughs> and what about wax? <laughs> so much of money spent on earth. Which is going back to earth. But how much are we spending on the heart which God looks at? Praise the Lord. We all men should learn from all our precious sisters. Praise God. So now, David looks at Goliath. Is he ready for a battle? Yep. Now, is he ready on for the battle because, because he's strong no. No. or because he's believing that God is with him? Does he fight Goliath? Yes. Fast forward. Does he kill him? Yes. yes. Does he bring the head of Goliath when he's entering the city yes. Yes. in his hand? Yes. Are the women singing yes. praises? Yes. They are saying. Saul killed a thousand and David killed ten thousand. When Saul listens to that song, what happens to Saul? He gets angry and angry. He gets jealous and angry. Now, was he fond of David? Yeah. Had he made him the commander? Yeah. Was David always bringing victory? Yeah. But what happened after this song? Saul is thinking, how can I kill him? Now when Saul, David is worshipping, is the evil spirit leaving Saul? Yes. Now, the very man who has brought deliverance and David is worshipping God, did, David, uh, did Saul try to kill him with a spear? Yeah. When David sees that God saved him more than twice, and Saul trying his best to kill him with a spear. Did David run for his life? Yes. How do you feel when you have done something good to somebody, saved somebody's life, and you are continuing to do good, and everything comes against you, and now you are running from your family. You can't even go home. You have to hide in the mountains. God, you told me you would make me a king. Where is my kingdom, Lord? Here I am running from him. Just because I have the prophecy, does that mean that prophecy will come to pass instantly? No. I have to go through the preparation. And God will always prepare us not in comfort zone but in the most uncomfort zone to depend on him. Is David hiding? Is Saul searching for him? So Saul has come with 3,000 soldiers. And he wants to kill David. And David is hiding in a cave. And Saul gets nature's call. And he goes into the same cave to ease himself. And now David's friend is saying, Hey, God has put his, your enemy into your hands. This is the time. Kill him and you shall be the king. What is David saying? I will not touch God's anointed one. Let God deal with him. But does David go and cut off his piece of his garment? Yeah. And then David shows him and says, Why are you trying to kill me? I cut your garment. If I wanted, I could have killed you. But because you are God's anointed and you are a father to me, I will not do such evil to you. Did Saul repent it? Yes. Did he cry? Yes. Did he go his way? Yes. But after a few months, did his heart get hardened again? Yes. yes. Did he come again with 3,000 soldiers? Yes. 
Now this time is in the valley. David is on the mountain. David tells his friend, let's go down into the valley. Praise God. So when David goes down and 3,000 soldiers are there, does God put those soldiers into a supernatural sleep? Yes. yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Is David able to go to Saul's chamber? Yes. yes. Are all the soldiers sleeping? Yes. Saul is sleeping? Yes. Has God done all this? Yes. 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 Now when he goes there, what is his friend saying? Can you see that spear right above his head? Command me. You don't have to kill him. I will kill him. And you can become the king. What does David say? Now, take that spear. Take that jug of water. And let's get out. <coughs> you mean to say, David, you took all that risk to pick up a jug of water? You came all this journey to pick up a spear? <laughs> and you took all this risk among 3,000 soldiers? Imagine if one of them has to wake up <laughs> you and I are dead. David just says, take it up and let's go. What was David doing? David did three things. The day he cut off a portion of his garment, that day Saul lost his anointing. And the Bible says, when the woman touched Jesus' garment, the power went out of Jesus into a body and she was healed. When Moses poured oil on Aaron's head and the oil came on his beard and on his garment, the Spirit of God came upon Aaron, the first high priest. But when Aaron died, his son took that garment, put it on himself and the Spirit of God came on his son. Elijah, when he was taken up to heaven, he took his garment and threw it down. And Elisha tore his garment and put the garment of Elijah and a double portion of the anointing came on Elijah. Paul's handkerchief was taken and put on people who were sick and sickness came out, demons came out and people were set free. So the moment he cut that garment, Saul lost his anointing. The moment he picked up that spear and walked out, Saul lost his kingdom. And the jug of water, Saul also lost his baptism right. What happened to Saul? Jealousy led him to go against David and the enemy used that moment and killed every member of his family except for one son who was a handicap. And what happened to Saul? Saul committed suicide. Was this God's plan for Saul? Or was it his own jealousy that brought him there? If Saul would have been in love, would David go for the battle? Yes, because David was the commander. Would he get victory? Yes. Would he defeat the enemy? Yes. But what did jealousy do? Jealousy took the very person who was supposed to help Saul away from Saul and now the enemy could destroy Saul's life. In the same way, the spirit of strife, the spirit of jealousy and envy will bring division. And once the division has been brought because of strife, that strife can wipe out your whole family. So is it a dangerous spirit that can destroy your generations? Yes. So do we need to take it lightly? No. Praise God. Write down. When we feel envy, when we feel envy leading us into strife, when we feel envy leading us into strife,
we must consider our ways we must consider our ways hagai 15 instead of grumbling instead of grumbling when others are blessed instead of grumbling when others are blessed we can rejoice with them we can rejoice with them praise god praise do we go through this when you see somebody who has hurt you is getting blessed do you rejoice or do you get annoyed when your next door neighbor is getting blessing after blessing does that irritate you let me give you an example there's a a b and c and their compound walls are common isn't that in london we see houses like that the house and the uh, compound wall is made of wood mm-hmm. yes. and it's Why common yeah. you you found yeah. yeah so a b and c are living over there a and b are very good friends but b and c are enemies but a is friendly to b and c possible yes not okay. so b is gone on a vacation so he tells a can you please keep an eye on my house and here's the key so he's gone on a tour for 15 days when he comes back he sees that his whole land outside is turned into a beautiful lawn with beautiful trees and everything and b looks at it and is really really amazed now will he go to c or a to meet them a and what will he say to a thank you for taking care of my house you have done it so beautifully and a says hold on hold on what you see over there it's not me who did c did it now what happens to b will b knock at the door and thank c possible so b goes and knocks at the door and tells c i am so thankful to you for what you have done and c says hold on wait a minute i did it because i started going to church is it a good yes. yes and then c says i heard the preacher preach the word i heard it so attentively that i took a decision to do it because i heard what the preacher said is it good yes, yes. and he said the preacher said when you do good to the person who is your enemy you are putting burning coals on his head <laughs> is it there in the book of romans yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when i heard that i always wanted to put burning coals on your head <laughs> and now i found it how to do it and that's why i did it now was the action good yes oh, yes action was good but was the heart condition good no <laughs> hallelujah Hallelujah. now will that statement turn them into friendship or more into bigger enemy bigger now is it possible that b will go and uproot all the trees yes, yes. could do it and throw it into his compound <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah so right on <laughs> now was that strife yes yes she did it out of love or strife strife so right on a humble person a humble person 
submits to God's will. A humble person submits to God's will. A prideful person, a prideful person will not submit. Will not submit. Have you heard the word submit? Yes. yes. What is submit? To surrender. To give in? To give in to the other person. To be conduct. To be? Conduct. Servant. Let be under control of. To follow. Wife. Obey God's will. Wife. Submit to your husband. <laughs> now all the husband are saying, Brother, can you preach on that, please? <laughs> <laughs> now what is submit? Submission. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. Now, now. Do you have some desires in your life? Yes. Yes. So do you want those desires to be fulfilled? Yes. So is that your mission? Yes. Now when you're saying submission means I take my desire away and I take the other person's desire and make it mine. mine and I'm doing it only because of love is called submission. For example, you're working in the office. Okay. This lady is working under you and she's saying at four o'clock I want to go and he said nothing doing. You have to stay up till six o'clock, finish the work. Now she is saying, okay. She does the job till six o'clock and it's fine. And you look at it and say, well done, good, good. And, and, and what is she doing? <laughs> but not from outside, from inside. Yeah. Now, did she submit? No. Yeah. no. no. Uh -huh. The action was right, yeah. but was there submission? Yeah. No. No. The submission should always be because of love. No. 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 So a humble person Submits to God's will, not because that if I submit, God will bless me. See, some people want to obey God because if I disobey, he'll punish me. So that's why I have to get up early in the morning. If I don't get up, he'll punish me. So is he doing it out of love or is he doing it out of fear? fear. But the other person is saying, I'm going to do this, Lord. Because I love you for what you already did for me on the cross. Yeah. So which one will make the person's relationship extremely intimate? The one who fears God or one who loves God? So a humble person is saying, because I love you, I'm ready to do anything for you. So is he interested in fulfilling his desire or God's desire? Yes. Even if it means to forgive, yes. Yes. even if it means to let go of everything, yes. 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 And that's why you find in the early church, they took their land, they took their money, they took their, their children, they killed them and all that. But they still submitted to God and faced every persecution with love. Wow. And today's gospel was the same. Persecution will come. They'll hand you over to the authorities, but the one who endures to the end will find victory. Please God. Please Write down. Casting all our care, casting all our care upon him, casting all our care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all our care upon him, for he cares for you. Now is the Bible saying cast all your cares unto God? Yes. What's the meaning of the word cast? The word cast means throw it with force. Not give. Cast. Throw it. Now is he saying throw your cares with force? So has God created man to carry cares? Now, has God created man to carry love? Yes. So when he carries love, 
is God's goodness and God's blessing manifest in his life? But if the person is carrying cares, will good things manifest in his life? So when a person is worried, is he carrying cares? Yes. Is he supposed to give the cares to Jesus? Hello. Uh, let me let me give you the scripture. Let me find it. It is in Matthew. Ah. Ah. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. Okay. Are you enjoying? Yes. yes. Is it challenging all of us to change, including me? Yes. Yes. Because we are none of us are perfect, but by following the truth and making the corrections, we are going towards God's destination. The rerouting will be minimized. Otherwise, rerouting, rerouting, you will find yourself in London. <laughs> you have to go to Dublin and rerouting, rerouting. Goa. <laughs> oh, Goa as well. <laughs> a long way. But that's not a, a long way. Okay. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you. Rest. Now many people like this scripture, but they don't like the next one. <laughs> and every time this scripture is quoted, it stopped over here. But they don't want to take the next one. Mm -hmm. The next scripture says, "Take, my yoke. take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and and you shall." find rest or you shall find peace unto your soul for my yoke is easy and my burden is light praise God so let me explain to you now has anybody ever experienced worry in their life yes. when do you find worry oh you are thinking so much means it has been a long many years when you got worried And that's why you have forgotten what is worry. <laughs> because it was the right old experience when I was young, not yet married. After I got married, the worry also go went off. Worried the whole time. What is worry? Lack of trust. Worry is when a person mind is not in faith but in fear is full of worry and God is saying all that cares all that worries you cast it on me for I care for you I don't know how you do farming in those olden days in India when they would do farming they would have bullock cart two bulls okay and the yoke was put on them and they would do the plowing where they would pull I think you all would use horse okay one or two normally one but sometimes sometimes two and uh, what about the cart no not tractors I'm talking about those days if, if there was a big load there would be two horses okay let's take two horses let's take two horses now Jesus is giving us an example over here that all those who are heavily laden or labor I want you to I want to give you rest how take my yoke upon you means just as there are two horses Jesus saying one horse is me and the second horse is you, you. When you take the yoke on you, it will look like you got the yoke. 
but you are just walking with me but i will take the whole yoke and i will pull the whole cart all i want you to do is walk with me but if the horse says no 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 i don't want to walk with you and he goes in the wrong direction now the whole weight will come on him so he's saying for you to be free from that yoke you just agree to my word and i will carry the whole burden and i will give you rest to your mind because i will still take you to my destination and not the destination that is running in your mind and that's why he says my yoke is easy and my burden is light now what is jesus is yoke why did jesus come he came to bring salvation and how did he bring salvation on the cross and by the preaching of his work so now he's saying all your burdens you give to me and take my mission on your shoulder and go around sharing the word with your testimony with your lifestyle with your love walk and now i will carry everything that you need on my on my shoulder supply you that everything that you need and now you too like me shall become a blessing to others so how many people take no no next slide how many people are willing to take his yoke what is his yoke wow. to reach out to the lost are we having this intention that my life is no longer mine it has been purchased by god through the life of jesus through the blood that he shed and now i have no right over this life because i was a slave of satan but jesus set me free and after he set me free he does not claim any claim over my life but now it's my choice let me give you an example you are a slave was brought on a in a slave market and the auction began and the price was put there was this young man who put the price five times and everybody began to think who is this young man but there's another person who increased it he increased it by another five times now everybody in the market is saying this young man is foolish and he pays more than 10 times 10000 times more than the price of a slave what must be going on in the mind of the slave who is this young man who is paying such a heavy price for me and the hammer comes down and the slave is handed over to him so he break he removes all the shackles and the chains and everything and sets him free now after remaining all that this young man after making the payment starts walking and is not even looking back whether the slave is falling the slave is so happy he said i got my freedom and he starts running in the opposite direction and the young man is walking in the opposite direction is not even looking behind the slave as he is running is thinking my old master had made my life miserable this man looks to be so loving so kind and he has put his trust in me he broke the chains he broke everything and he set me free and he's not even telling me follow me who is this man who loves me so much will he take a u turn yes. yes now will he come running after him yes. yes so this young man the slave comes running after the young man and the young man says i set you free you can go your way no problem will this slave want to go away no, no. is he saying now I want to be your slave by choice. Yes. yes. That's what Saint Paul says. I am a bonded slave of Jesus. He has not made me a slave by force, but the price that he paid to set me free, he let me go. But now, looking at his love and compassion, I made a choice 
that I want to be a slave for ever. Now, did Paul take Jesus' yoke? Yes. yes. Did he go around preaching the word of God? Yes. And for that, did he take every thrashing? Yes. Yes. Every hardship? Yes. Now, was he carrying it or Jesus carrying for him? Jesus. Did he finish his race yes. in victory? Yes. yes. Did he say, I fought my fight? Yes. My battle with faith? Yes. yes. And I did not quit? Yes. Now, what is your answer? Have you taken his yoke? And if I don't take Jesus' yoke, then Satan is putting his yoke. We have to carry a yoke. Either I carry the yoke of Satan or I carry the yoke of Jesus. And Jesus says, if you learn of me the life that I lived and my followers who lived and you imitated them, then you will carry my yoke and my yoke is easy and the burden is light. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just pause for a moment, close eyes, and talk to Jesus of all that we heard? Can we look into our own life? Imagine you are born in Ireland, and there are so many people who are born in Africa. And there is so much, so much of hardship, so much of uncomfort. There's no water to drink, there's no house to stay, there is disease, sickness everywhere, war everywhere, and life is so painful. And that same God has given you such a beautiful life. Are you still complaining and grumbling and murmuring? If Jesus has to say to you, For just two days, I want you to exchange your position. You take the place of those people in Africa and let them take your place. What would be your experience? What would be your response? Would they be still grumbling, complaining and murmuring? Or will there be high praises? and thanksgiving with gratitude. My friend, God loves you. He loves you and he has kept you away from so many things that the people of this world are experiencing. And it is so painful and it is so tough. But yet God in his love has given you the best. How much does Satan put pressure on you that you so quickly get into strife? How much do you compare yourself with others who are higher than you? Why don't you compare yourself with those who are extremely lower than you? What is it that the devil keeps coming against you that you get into bitterness, offense, anger, jealousy, pride, envy? Today the Lord is saying to you, wherever you are right now, it is because of our own decision. It is because of our own thinking. It is because of our own words. It is because of our own actions. That same Jesus is saying to you, my friend, can you look at Jesus and say to Jesus, Lord Jesus, I have experienced so much of your goodness. And now, in answer to that, I want to live for you. So
solve the Farsi was walking in a wrong direction. But when Jesus showed himself to him, he began to realize his mistake. He quickly made correction. He was ready to let go of everything. His position, his authority, his money, his knowledge, his relationship, his citizenship, because all that he was interested was, I want to be a true disciple of Jesus. I am ready to forsake my Roman citizenship and now live with the Gentiles, live with those who don't deserve to be loved and give them the love of Jesus. My friend, Jesus is saying to you that he loves you, he cares for you and he's saying to you if you can stop being self-centered self-dependent, self-sufficient all about self then everything in your life is going to change Everything in your life is going to help you to make the right choices, the right decision, to be humble, to be full of patience and endurance and that very battle that is coming against you, that humility will help you to be prepared to take that battle no longer with the mindset of a victim but with the mindset of a victor and that very battle you are taking it as an adventure Father in heaven thank you for teaching us the powerful truth the extreme tool of Satan, strife, unforgiveness, bitterness, envy and jealousy and these spirits in our life has come to steal, kill and destroy all the goodness and all the blessings that you have given us. This is only possible when we refuse to walk in love, in forgiveness, when we refuse to align our thinking to the word of God. Thank you Lord for teaching us how important it is for us to be humble, that is to agree our thoughts, our words, our actions to the word of God. We thank you Lord as we make this correction in our life, Satan's hold in our life is destroyed. The secret areas of our life where Satan is having hold over our weaknesses, where Satan is making us do things that we hate to do and we do not do the things that God wants us to do. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, let your anointing destroy, yes, destroy every strife that is operating in our life. 
and let that spirit of strife be replaced by the spirit of God. The Bible says when a person turns to the Lord, when the person repents, the veil that has been blinding our mind, that veil is removed. And now, the same Spirit of God who is with us is a spirit of freedom, is a spirit of liberty, is a spirit that makes us overcome us. Thank you Lord that as this very moment corrections are made, Satan's legal right over our lives are destroyed. Sickness and affliction and infirmity has no more power over our lives. It is completely destroyed and destroyed from the root and bodies, souls and every area of our life receives abundant life that brings victory after victory after victory in every area of our life. We thank you, we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, we will take just two healings before we break. Just two healings. Okay, just two healings. Again, anybody come who needs healing? Yeah, please come. You are on camera. You are on camera. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry, I'll, I'll turn. I'll keep it a little back. Okay. What's the problem? Okay. And what about you? Fungal. Huh? It's a rash. I have fungus. And it's painful. It's very itchy. Itchy. Okay. Uh, here is a sister who is having cancer and here is a sister who is having a skin problem. Praise God. Praise God. Now, uh, did you pray for this cancer to go away? I did. What were you praying? I was asking God to Okay. Here is the sister who is saying, I want, can you give me the mic? The, the yeah, mic. Yes, sir. Now listen, this is recorded yeah. so that the others also understand the truth and the truth will set them free. 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 Yeah. I had breast cancer and I had two types of cancer. And I was operated and I'm going back again the 13th of December. Hopefully I'll okay. be cleared. And, and, and you prayed to God to take it away? Oh, I do. Yeah. Okay. okay. And what about you? Yes, I haven't had it about three months. And what did you pray? Well, I must say, I have said, but maybe not on a continual basis, by your wounds, I have been healed. But maybe there's a doubt, maybe I'm not 100% okay. honest with it. Right? Okay, okay. Now, now, let me explain to you. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. So let the sick say, I am healed. I am healed. Now this is the system that God talks about. He does not say, let the weak pray to God to make him strong. But the weak opens his mouth and says, I am strong. Now when he's saying, I am strong, is he really strong in his body? No. He's still weak. So the symptom says he's weak, but he's still saying I'm strong. So did the person say a lie? No. 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 But isn't he weak? Yes. Yes. Then why isn't he saying a lie? No. 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 He's speaking. In faith, he's speaking. No. So, so when a person is saying I'm strong, is he speaking the fact, or is he speaking the truth? The fact says, I'm weak. The truth says, I'm strong. Now, is he following the Bible 
or is he following the emotions? Bible. So when he followed the Bible, did he speak fact or faith? Faith. Faith. Now, did God say that he will he will heal that sickness? Yes. So did you ever hear Jesus saying your prayer has healed you? No. No. Did you ever hear Jesus saying, I have healed you? No. Did you ever hear Jesus saying, your faith has healed you? Yes. 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 Did Jesus say, you don't know, when he, when he looks in the Bible, he, he, he healed a blind man. Did he say, your faith has healed you? Yes. So, the Bible speaks about faith brings healing. Right? So, when does a person speak faith? When the person agrees to the word of God. As if you're so sick and you come out the other end, it makes you realize. Sorry? If you're so sick and you really know that, you know, you have only maybe very little time, Okay. And you come out then the other side. Makes you, it makes you believe that God is around you. You you are saying it makes me believe God is around me when I see the healing. Yeah. yeah. But the Bible says Jesus said He will never leave you nor forsake you till the end of time. So are you going to rely on the word or are you going to rely when He heals you is around? Because the word of God says that. Yeah. So our life is governed by the word or our life is governed by emotions? Yeah. By the word. By the word. So now did Jesus say God will move your mountain or did he say you speak to the mountain? You speak to the mountain. So is cancer in the mountain? Yes. 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 So are you supposed to take charge over that mountain and commanded to me move or are you supposed to tell God to move the mountain? Take charge. Take charge. So if I switch on the switch will the light come on? Yeah. Yes. So when the switch is off you mean to say there is no power over there? There is power there but the power is not reached here. Because the switch is in charge. So in the same way when you command the cancer to get out. Have you switched on the switch? Yes. Yeah. But when you tell God to get the cancer out, have you switched on the switch? No. no. Are you understanding? Yeah. So who is in charge to get the devil get to get the cancer out? Yourself. And God. Praise God. So now that you know. How much is it difficult to open the tap when you go for a shower? The shower, the tap is there. Yeah. Is it difficult to open the tap and get the water? Or is it difficult to pray and ask God to open the tap? No. Which one? Pray to God, you have to really mean what you're saying. So, so, which one is right? You open the tap or tell God to open the tap? No, I don't do it myself. You do it yourself. Yeah. So, in the same way Jesus said, you do it yourself in my name yeah. and the Father will do it. Yes. But you got to speak to that mountain. Yeah. But if you don't speak to the mountain, the Father says, it's the wrong system. There's a switch there. And I put the switch on over here. Is this switch connected there? No. no. That switch is connected there? Yeah. So only when I put that right switch, it will work. Yeah. In the same way, when you follow the system the right way, it will always work. Yeah. Are you following? Yes. yes. Are you following? Yes. yes. Now regarding hers, is the switch right? Yes. She is saying, by the wounds of Jesus, I am yeah. healed. healed. But now the question is, does faith work by speaking the scripture only or does faith work 
by speaking the scripture with confidence. So when a person is with confidence, does it bother him when he looks at the I Ching? Because for him, it is already oh. So even if the I Ching is there, he is saying, yes, I can feel it with my senses, but the match is over. So now will he look at the Eaching and say it's there, or will he say, Thank you, Lord, you have set me free? Are you following? Yes. So, just because I know the Bible, does that mean it's going to work? No. It will only work when I have confidence. Now, both these things which are there, we won't know because we will know only when the report comes. But if I have somebody with arthritis, do I, can I get somebody with arthritis? Yeah, come my brother. He put his hand quickly. <coughs> yeah, I can see camera. you. Yeah, in, on the camera. No, no, he knows he's on camera. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he always wanted to be on camera. Please, <laughs> 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 right. now, now, where do you have that arthritis? Shoulders in the back. And the legs? Yes. Yes. Because when you came back, your legs did not become straight. They were coming <laughs> slowly. <laughs> slowly. <laughs> because there was extreme pain. Now, now, I want you to do watch what I'm doing. Okay? I'm not touching him. Okay? I'm going to use the word. The word he's going to hear with his ears. Okay? He's going to close his eyes. Imagine those words. It will go inside. Search for that arthritis and kill it. So if that arthritis is killed, that means the pain has to leave. And if this pain is left, I use the same method to kill cancer. I use the same method to kill skin disease. Because the method is the same. Hello, the method is the same. It is not only for healing, it is for everything in the kingdom of God. So, are you going to pray or are you going to agree? Pray. Yeah. Pray. See, when you agree, is your prayer. Okay. I'll, I'll give you an example. You are praying to God. How long have you been suffering from this? Oh, 15 years. Eight years means 80, 90, 100 years? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Ten years. I, 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 10 years. Ten years. You say like that. When you said for long, many years, I thought 80, 90, 100 years. 10 years. 10 years. Okay. Now, 10 years you have been praying to God. Yep. You have been asking God to do it. Yes. So now, is your prayer according to the word? Yes. No, no. Because God says, you speak to arthritis. When was the last time you spoke to arthritis? I spoke to God. I spoke to arthritis. You spoke about arthritis yes. to God. But you did not speak to arthritis? No. No. So now, are you going to change? Yes. And talk to arthritis? Yes. yes. Sure? Yes. Then we will see what happens. Okay. Is it a deal? It's a deal. Okay, close your eyes. Now, I want you to watch closely because you are going to follow the same method. Okay? Close your eyes. And those who are sitting here, you follow the same method for whatever you got. That's how you kill not only arthritis, everything of the devil. Okay? Now, say this Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. No, no, let him say, please. You say softly. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you for teaching me the truth. Lord, thank you for teaching me the truth. The truth when I applied. Truth when I applied. You said. You said. The truth shall set me free. The truth shall set me free. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. For not following. For not following. Your system. Your system. When you cursed the fig tree. When you got to the fig tree. And the fig tree died from the root. And the fig tree died from the root. Peter asked you. Peter asked you. Peter, Peter asked you. Peter asked you. Peter, Lord, how did you do that? How did you do that? And you said. And you said. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Whosoever. Whosoever. Shall say. Shall say. To this mountain. To this mountain. You never said. You never said. Whosoever. Whosoever. Shall pray about this mountain. Shall pray about this mountain. Please forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me, Lord. For ten years. Ten years. I've been praying about my mountain called arthritis. I've been praying about mountain called arthritis. 
but now, but now I'm willing to humble, I'm willing to humble and agree to your word and agree to your word and believe your word and believe your word. So now Lord Jesus, so now Lord Jesus, in your name, in your name, I am talking, I am talking to this spirit of infirmity, to this spirit of infirmity. Your spirit of arthritis, your spirit of arthritis, according to the word, according to the word, I am talking to you, I am talking to you. I bind you, I bind you. I curse you, I curse you. Just like Jesus cursed the fig tree, just like Jesus cursed the fig tree. And the Bible teaches me, and the Bible teaches me, the words of Jesus, the words of Jesus, kill the tree completely, kill the tree completely, from its root, from its root. In the same way, in the same way, as I cursed you arthritis, as I cursed you arthritis, you are dead from the root. You are dead from the root. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. And I cast you out of my body. And I cast you out of my body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I do not doubt in my heart. I do not doubt in my heart. But I believe. I believe. What I just said. What I just said. It shall surely come to pass. It will surely come to pass. You said. You said. I shall have. I shall have. Whatever I say. Whatever I say. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. All these years. All these years. I kept saying. I kept saying. I am suffering from arthritis. I am suffering from arthritis. And I am having it. And I am having it. And it is growing. And it is growing. But today. But today. I say. I say. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Arthritis is dead. Arthritis is dead. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My cartilages. My cartilages. Are recreated. Are we created? Made absolutely new. Made absolutely new. My bones are lubricated. My bones are lubricated. The joints are lubricated. The joints are lubricated. The tendons and ligaments are made new. The tendons and ligaments are made new. The nerves are relaxed and loosed. The nerves are relaxed and loosed. And I'm completely set free. And I'm completely set free. From arthritis. From arthritis. Not only today. Not only today. But forever. But forever. And it is not coming into my family. And it is not coming into my family. Nor my generation. Nor my generation. It has been uprooted. It has been uprooted. Right from the root. Right from the root. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. For teaching me the truth. For teaching me the truth. I declare. I declare. Before heaven and earth. Before heaven and earth. By the stripes of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus. I am completely healed. I am completely healed. I receive my miracle. I receive my miracle. Right now. Right now. It is finished. It is finished. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please open your eyes and do this. Is there any pain? No. Do this. Is there any pain? No. No. Do this. Is there any pain? No. No. Do this now. It's all gone. Now, now, my question to you is: For ten years, you were pressing the wrong switch. <laughs> now, was the problem with Jesus? Was the problem with Holy Spirit? Was the problem with the Word? Or was the problem with you? Because you did what everybody did, but you did not follow what Jesus told you to do. Okay. Is that right? Yes. Do you know what this miracle is? This miracle is his cartilages are eaten up. And that's why those bones, they rub against each other. And that's why it causes pain. Now what he spoke has recreated brand new cartilages. Are you with me? Yes. Now, did I speak with confidence? Yes. Or with fear? Now what does confidence do? Confidence always brings results. Now he can say the same prayer with doubt. And the Bible says, a person who prays in doubt will get nothing from God. Now you will ask me, how do you get this confidence? First of all, when you started driving the car the first day in a motor training school, and the truck came and stood by your side and you looked out of the window. The tire size and your head size was the same. And you looked at the truck, tire, what came to you? That's massive. That's massive. But today, when the truck passes by, 
Do you think it's massive? No. No, because you're confident in controlling the car. So 10 years you put a wrong gear and kept thinking my car will go in front. Yes. Today you learn to put the right gear and the car began to move in the right direction. Now, do not feel annoyed with me, but that is how it works. Congratulations. And the next part is, you are an excellent person who believed so quickly, and that's why it happened so quickly. Could Jesus heal anybody in Nazareth? Yes. No. no. <laughs> because they were not willing to agree with him. Whereas what I spoke, you did not challenge. You said, I tried for 10 years. Why not? I agree what he's telling. And that's why you received your healing. Now, was that pride or you will? <coughs> but all these years, what you were praying, according to the word of God, was it pride or humility? Pride. But were you aware of it? No. And the devil keeps us in that for years and gives you the message, God did not heal you. It's not that God did not heal you. You did not put the right switch. <coughs> Hello? Is that right? Yes. Yes. So shall we pray? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you can go. <coughs> I'm going to pray for both of you. Okay. Okay. Say this with me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. No, no, close your eyes. You know I'm asking you to close your eyes? Because you're saying, I can't see anything in the physical. I'm only concentrating as if Jesus is standing before me and I'm talking to you. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you so much. I thank you so much. For teaching me the truth. For teaching me the truth. The truth sets me free. The truth sets me free. I right now witness. A creative miracle. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Even I have made the same mistake. Even I have made the same mistake. Asking you to heal. Asking you to heal. Instead of believing. That you have given me the authority. That you have given me the authority. The word. Word. Your Holy Spirit, your anointing, that I can speak to the mountain. Now that I know the truth, I speak to the spirit of infirmity, cancer, skin disease. In the name of Jesus, I curse you. And as I said, I curse you. I curse you. In the name of Jesus. You are dead from the root. You are dead from the root. Like the fig tree died from the root. Like the fig tree died from the root. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I do not doubt. I do not doubt. But I believe. But I believe. That what I said. What I said. It is done. It is done. This cancer. This cancer. Is completely destroyed. Is completely destroyed. This infirmity. Is completely destroyed, is completely destroyed, cast out of my body, cast out of my body, and planted into the sea, planted into the sea, that it can never come back again. It can never come back again. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Every cell, every cell, every tissue, every tissue of my body, of my body, has received your life, has received your life, and now. Now it's functioning, it's functioning perfectly. perfectly. There's no more malfunction. There's no more malfunction in my body. In my body. Cancer is destroyed. Cancer is destroyed. And my body is restored. And my body is restored. And Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for healing me. From now on. From now on. I go around testifying. I go around testifying. What the Lord has done for me. What the Lord has done for me. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit. For giving me. I've given me. This victory. This victory. And with this victory. And with this victory. I bring victory. I bring victory in the lives of others. In the lives of others by sharing the truth. By sharing the truth. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. It is finished. It is finished. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You know that grip that you gave me mm -hmm. says you believe. Yeah. I do believe.
Praise God. Congratulations. Praise God. So we had good spiritual food, isn't it? Yes. Now we have good physical, natural food for our stomach. Praise God. Now, Lonnie is here to share something. Yeah, come. No, no, come in, come in. No, just to share that there's a beef stew, uh, there's a vegetarian dish, and there's two chicken curries, and there's plenty of food for everyone. The multiple of the loaves of viciousness of happiness.